I've seen movies like Trollland, which I thought was the worst, laziest movie I would ever see. But then I watched this animated ripoff of The Lion King titled Lion and the King, which is already grammarly incorrect. It should be titled The Lion and the King, but that's not the biggest problem here. Last year on my DeviantArt, I would do a collab with a YouTuber by the name of John the Guy One, in which I chose what we should review. Anyway, I felt as though John should get a turn this time. So I got him on board in this movie. This movie is what he chose. Welcome, John. Hey, everyone, and thanks for having me, Ryan. Yes, this is definitely one of the worst animated things I've ever seen, and I'm not exaggerating when I said that it's barely even a movie. So, before we begin, I actually did some research on this movie, and wouldn't you know, this is actually a PlayStation 1 game, and I use the word game loosely because all there is pretty much as far as gameplay goes is a puzzle and a coloring book. And of course, this animated movie or cutscene, I suppose. This game reminds me a lot of Phoenix games, and as it turns out, only the publisher is different. We have Midas Interactive Entertainment to blame for letting this movie see the light of day. Well, you see, Ryan, these films actually originally come from a German animation movie studio called Dingo Pictures. They were then adapted, adapted, into video games here in the United States through Midas Entertainment. Uh, all the films from Dingo Pictures were, well, pretty much all of them anyway, were actually animated mockbusters of Disney movies and DreamWorks movies, mostly Disney movies. And pretty much all their films were written and directed by the same person, a woman named Roswitha Haas. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I'm speaking here in the past tense because the studio has not released a new film in over 10 years. Interesting. Well, with most sincerity, I do hope she is doing okay. But onto the movie itself. I'd like to talk some about the artwork. These characters and backgrounds don't look too bad, but at the same time, it looks a lot similar to something I'd make in the fourth grade. A screenshot of any close-up on these characters looks like those before and after drawings you'll see people do after five years. The artist either didn't care or he is new to drawing. Not to mention how horrible the actual animation is. There's hardly any fluidity. The characters barely move at all. You're not wrong. The animation is on the level of Oregon Trail 2. A lot of the movie is just talking heads or what look like broken legs walking. There are parts in this movie where the animation will repeat for no reason. In one occasion of this, they literally have the same monkey swing on the same vine twice. By the way, the film we're talking about today was actually a sequel to another film they made called The King of the Jungle, which I couldn't find available to watch online anywhere in English. By the way, did you notice that the backgrounds here are all just still images? You know, it's just so lazy. There's even one scene which features a river in the background, which is drawn to look like it would be moving, but it doesn't move at all. And dear God, the voice acting. The voice actors are clearly not voice actors, or unlike Kid Danger, not even actors for that matter. Those are the bad ones, but then you have the voices that are so annoying that they will kill your ears. Their voices are so screechy that they are actually louder than everyone else. But it's mine! I picked it! All day long we had to work down in a mine to bring out the diamonds, and then he kept them! Yeah! Thankfully, none of our main characters are like this. Yeah, a lot of the voice acting here is pretty awful. A lot of times the VAs sound like they're barely even trying. Then there's our main character, Robin, a boy lion cub, who I'm pretty sure is voiced by a grown woman. This would be fine, of course, if it wasn't so obvious. You guys are crazy. You quarrel about a banana? Yes, but unlike, say, 
Tara Strong, for example, the voice actress uses her real voice rather than, you know, actually try to sound like a male child. It doesn't help that her voice is so monotone. She sounds like she's trying to teach us phonics instead of acting. Dear Peary, I think I better go. Otherwise, she might come in here and my father finds out we met. <gasps> we'll be in big trouble. A lot of the one-off characters also have some particularly bad voice acting. For instance, there's a monkey with an extremely irritating voice. Thankfully, he doesn't say too much. Let's have the vultures! Then there's an elephant character with one particular line delivery that borders on so bad it's good. We're the king. We need our orders. There's also some really bad lip syncing with those two animals that act as the narrators of the film. There was a silence in the jungle again. The old lion was the animal's king again, and the bad panther was driven off. In all fairness to these voice actors, the dialogue isn't much better. It actually reminds me a lot of the first draft of my scripts here. Or how my videos would sound if I didn't proofread. Some lines are so bootlegged in this movie that I wouldn't be surprised if monkeys themselves wrote this. My favorite line in the movie is... Your father, the Black Panther, is your father? It's just so stupid and repetitive for no reason. I also like how we don't actually get the bear character's name. Instead, Robin just calls him the smartest bear of all times. Yeah, a lot of the dialogue either comes off as not very natural, or seems like they were just kind of lazy or off with the translation. For instance, at one point in the movie, a character says a line, Where is that? Where most people would probably just say, Where's that? Just one small thing, but, you know, an annoying one nonetheless. Usually, I'd go over the characters and their personality, but I honestly couldn't tell you. They just kind of seem to react however the plot wants them to. There are no traits or consistency. The only two I can think of, even worth mentioning, are the alligator, who is Robin's best friend. He thinks Robin replaced him and is jealous throughout the entire movie. And a snake towards the end, she really doesn't need to be here. Basically, all she does is say, It wasn't my fault. I've warned them. Granted, it wasn't, but no one was even blaming her. What, does she have like a guilty conscience or something? Anyway, John, you want to start off with the plot? I'll give it a shot. But the thing is with the plot here is that it's kind of difficult to follow, partly because you're too busy staring at the horrible animation. But basically, the plot here is a typical cliched story about two feuding families who each have a kid who meet and they want to become friends despite the feuding. It's kind of like Romeo and Juliet without the romance. Yes, a true story of friendship. Or, well, a very cliched story of friendship. As John said, the story is very difficult to follow. I think another reason behind this is perspective. Characters will join scenes at random, and we never really get a sense of who is there or where they are. By the way, there's this one um, interesting scene in the movie where the two cubs meet for the first time and start arguing with each other. Uh, this features them repeatedly saying, you know what, to each other and hissing. Uh, yeah, it's actually had me laughing a lot, and I'm not sure that was the intention. I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah, that scene is definitely interesting. To sum up the story, the way I understand it, uh, the Black Panther did something bad, and the other animals have alienated him out of their lives other than the gorillas. Somehow the diamonds went missing. I just don't understand how the diamonds relate to any of this. For some reason, who even knows at this point? Robin wants to find the diamonds, so he looks for them, gets caught up by the Black Panther's son, and they look for the diamonds together with the alligator. The son gets hurt because Robin and him fell into a cave, but they do find the diamonds. Instead of helping, Robin's dad and the Black Panther's dad argue, while the other animals help the cubs out of the cave. We end up them making a compromise in which they share half of the diamonds, and then, of course, there is 
very stupid dialogue and just stupid moments in between. We could become friends. Mm, I don't know. I think we should be enemies. I don't know, John. Did I leave anything out? Because that's about the best I can do. No, that pretty much covers it. The only other scene that I want to bring up is the scene where the two cubs fall down the cave. You know, they fall down a pretty far drop, and they should come up at least seriously injured, but they're like totally fine. Doesn't make much sense. Well, the panther cub did get knocked out, but once he had awoken, he was perfectly fine. So, yeah, they should have at least been bruised up. And that's pretty much the movie. Once again, the animation is horrible, the voice acting is horrible, and there's not much story or character to speak of. John, I appreciate you being here. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we make this video a wrap? Not too much. Just thanks again for having me. And this movie sucks. Well said. Thanks everyone for watching.